Okay, so let's get into the scripture. It is the amen. Let's start with the amen that is in agreement with us, okay? So we understand where this is coming from. So Revelation 3, uh, 15 tells us, well, let's go, let's start at 14. It says, I want to see if I can turn this around. Hold on. Okay, so it says, and unto the angel of the church of the Laodiceans who <laughs> write these things, said the Amen, the faithful and true witness, the beginning of the creation of God. And we know that is Christ, aka the Word, aka the Holy Spirit. I know thy works that thou art neither cold nor hot. I would thou wert cold or hot. He's saying, Don't be lukewarm, profess the things of God and be in an, be in integrity. When we are not professing the things of God, the ways of God, the words of God, we are essentially lukewarm. But this is also no to the fact that the Holy Spirit is a witness against us when we are Luke warm when we are not professing the things of God when we are not walking in integrity and in the ways of God he says so then because thou art lukewarm and neither could cold nor hot I will spew thee out of my mouth okay um, I'm gonna take us down here because essentially he was telling them that they were naked in the spirit and without the covering of the blood of the lamb right um, this is a court hearing <laughs> essentially that is happening in the courts of heaven and so and goes on to speak about this as well, okay? Because he tells them that they are professing, um, you know, how rich they are and all the things that they have. But in the inside, they are lacking integrity. And he says that they are without covering, that they are naked in the spirit. You know, the, that the blood of the lamb is what covers us in the spirit. So they were being chastised. Okay, so... He goes on, we're going to come down here because he tells them, I counsel thee to buy of me gold, tried in the fire, that thou mayest be rich in white raiment, that thou mayest be clothed, and that the shame of thy nakedness do not appear, and anoint thine eyes with eye salves, that thou mayest see, as many as I love, I rebuke and chasten, be zealous therefore, and repent. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come. Uh, into him and will sup with him and he with me to him that overcometh will I grant to sit with me in my throne even as I also overcame and have, and am set down with my father in his throne he that hath an ear let him hear what the spirit saith unto the churches now I have a quick note here that's speaking to a man right which is faithful and true witness which is the holy spirit that is witnessing to you the things of God. Okay, this is when we are in agreement. We see the Holy Spirit sees and cannot come into agreement with it if it is not of God. This is when we're dealing with imposter syndrome. Okay, the chastening from Yah to repent and come into agreement with him. Okay, this is when God's saying, hey, the things that you're speaking are not my will. You will feel a conviction here, okay? You will feel conviction. And when you are feeling conviction, essentially that is the that is the courts of heaven going into um, a case. So there's a case in heaven. The moment that you have conviction in your spirit, there's a case in heaven that will happen, okay? There will be a court hearing in the courts of heaven. So that is when God is chastening you, <laughs> okay? that This is when God is chastening you and he's saying, hey, I need you to repent. I need you to change your mind. I need you to confess your sin, a aka confess that you did not understand a certain thing so I can give you understanding and you can change your mind about how you're seeing this and then speak my will so then I can come into agreement with you and prosper that because that is my plan. I will prepare form it okay so this is what is happening in the courts of heaven the moment that we have conviction however god wants us to repent before we even get to the court hearing because when we do this this is when we take on the covering of the lamb the blood of the lamb this is when now we are no longer naked in the spirit but we are cloth and white raiment so whenever the devil is trying to persecute us god we our defender is our brother who is christ and he says, hey, I've been through this down there, dad. They are going through some things. The temptations of the, of the enemy are wicked. And 
I've overcome them. And so this is when God doesn't see us. He sees Christ and he says, you know what? You are innocent. This is all happening in the courts of heaven. Okay. You know what? You are innocent. And then that is when we are no longer convicted of that thing. We are no longer feeling guilty because of that thing. And we come into agreement with the Holy Spirit. Amen. And we receive that thing that God planned and intended for us all along. Okay. So now we're going to go to Numbers 6, 27. You're also healed of imposter syndrome, by the way. But let's get into the power of the I am, okay? I want to talk about that because it's so important for us to know and understand that how we use our words, spelling versus cursing, okay? Let me turn this around. So we know it says, this is number six. This is the blessing on the children of Israel, okay? It says, the Lord lift up his countenance upon thee and give thee peace, right? We talked about the nervous system being regulated. It says, and they shall put my name upon the children of Israel and I will bless them. Put, put means to invoke, okay? To invoke. And then we also see that there's a cross reference here for Numbers 2320. So we this, this is when we see that um, Balak and Balaam are trying to curse the children of Israel. I was just there. Okay, here it is. Balaam's parable, second prophecy. It says, Behold, I have received commandment to bless, and he hath blessed, and I cannot reverse it. Okay, let's go up here. It says, God is not a man that he should lie, neither the son of man that he should repent. Hath he said, and shall he not do it? And hath he spoken, and shall not he not make it good? Behold, I have received commandment to bless, and he hath blessed, and I cannot reverse it. So when we say, I am blessed, we are literally knocking on the door to God. We are knocking, okay? And this is the inheritance that we are claiming. God will bless Israel. So all these blessings are what we are knocking on the door of to God and saying, hey, I'm here. Can I have my blessing? Okay. <laughs> so when Christ is now saying, "Knock, I'm knocking at the door and he that opens the door, my father and I will come in and sup with them. This is what you are professing. All these blessings, this is the reason why we do not say anything other than I am blessed and also the things of God. Guys, I express just how powerful your words are. So continue to bless the children and bless yourselves and bless God above all. Amen.